guys, it's Hinge and Andrew with Rags, Tags, and Confections, and we're back with you this week for another Create at Home with G Design Team project, and I'm going to do work on a mixed media card. Now this one, <laughs> this one's taken a while, and it's far from perfect, but the end result I liked um, is something that I pictured in my head when we were going through the different stamps and products that we have from Gara's store and this one was the one that kind of jumped out at me to use so we're going to be using the little mouse stamp set um, I did check before I started recording this and I do not believe he has any of this particular stamp set left in stock but maybe you have purchased it um, you might be interested in it or use any of your stamps um, stamp sets with the, the techniques that I'm going to be using today and I'm going to turn this into a mixed media card and that being said don't panic mixed media is just simply using different types of media in one project and we're going to be going from some different inks to chalk pastels to watercolor um, watercolor pens. So there's the little mouse. Set. Let's see if I can get one piece of paper there behind there. This little mouse set for fall is the one I'm going to be using. And it has the I love you, a bushel, and a peck. I picked you, and the sentiment I used was the wishing you a harvest of blessings. I also have a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch Bristol board. I, um, yeah. water brush, blending tool, a couple of Q tips for blending out the pencils, the pastel pencils, a couple different colors of ink. I'm going to be stamping the mice in the Memento Rich Coca. And as I was going through um, starting this, it started out on a piece of watercolor paper because that's what I had laying out handy. And I tried a little bit of playing around with the watercolor markers and I tried playing around with some different colors of um, alcohol markers and I was like, eh, I'm not sure what I want to do here. So, that's what it's like, you know what, I'm just going to dive in. Now one thing I do keep handy when I'm playing with a, um, a mixed media project or any project for that matter, whatever paper I'm working on, I keep a scrap piece of that paper on the side to swatch out my colors and markers and pencils and stuff in before I take it directly to the piece I'm working in. That way if it's not the right color that I want, well then I didn't just put it on my finished piece and have to start over. Also before I got started I went ahead and stamped out my three mice that I'm going to be using and stamp them onto some post-it removable tape so that I can mask those out. So I just stamp them out on the tape and fussy cut them out. And they're no way precise and perfect but it's enough that gets the job done. So to begin I took my little mice and I have the one with the leaves and I wanted him off to the side here. Now I didn't stamp him um, the whole way on the page. He's kind of going off the page here a little bit, and off the paper. So I'm going to take him a little further off the paper this time. All right, then we have what I'm going to call Mama Mouse, who's carrying the pumpkin. And I'm gonna, cause she's looking back, and the little, the little one looking forward. So, kind of like have Mama Mouse here looking back. And we'll have old Daddy Mouse with the oops, apples on his head, and he's gonna be trotting along in front of everybody. All right. Now, the reason I put these down first. 
just so that I can come in with one of my pastel pencils and give myself a guideline as to where each of these is going to sit. Because I kind of have them on a different plane. Now I have kind of marked up where their feet's going to hit. I'm going to go ahead and lift them up. And let's get our little mice out here. I'm going to start with my little one playing in the leaves. off the page with him a little bit. There it is. Let's see my towel go. Alright, now we need a little mama carrying the pumpkin. Well, that's what I'm referring to her as anyway. I think I'm going to move her a little further out now that I see where those leaves are. mouse here carrying the apples. I went with the brown on this one because I didn't, oh I about dropped that. Um, I didn't quite want that stark black outline on this. to the side. Put the lid on that before I stick my hand in it. Alright, now I'm going to... No, we're not going to do that yet. On the side here, up or behind the baby mouse, I just quickly sketched in a tree, and that's where I'm going to um, use the pastel pencils. I want my tree root kind of coming down. This, let me see if I can do this upside down for you guys. Well, it'll be right side for you guys, it's going to be upside down for me. But I'm going to pull my tree root up, and I'm going to start building my tree. And we're just going to Sketch an old lumpy, bumpy tree. I'm going to have it come in a little bit that way. And you'll have a branch come up there. Go back to Bob Ross days and oh, they'll have a happy tree and a happy cloud and show my age. And there's no rhyme or reason to this. It's just, it's just the tree. And I'm going to use a few different colors of pastel pencil here to build that up, but I'm just throwing in some lines for right now. Although I should have put the doggone ink down first, but... Okay. 
we'll figure that out. I should have inked it first, then did the tree. Love my brain. And you see they're rolling his eyes at me. <laughs> oh gosh, it is a dreary, rainy day here. We've dropped 40 some degrees in just a couple of days. It's just, it's crazy. I'm putting my masks back down here, preferably on the mice themselves and not on my. I was hoping I could get one more use out of these. I can deal with the bottom being off, but I'd like to keep that top covered. I did happen to find that we have an Arteza marker, watermark brush marker, that actually matches the um, Broken China Oxide ink rather well. And I think it was called Sea Breeze, or I'll have to look here in a minute after I get these down. And that's how I fixed my whoopsies on the other one, where I got halos. So I'm going to start with the tumble glass, and I just keep one sponge for color families. I, I don't have one for, yeah, that's going to smear that pastel, but it'll be alright. We'll fix it. That's going to be our ground down there anyway, so... Now, I'm not being too precise about pulling this in from the side and blending everything out. Broken China. And this is a very juicy pad. A stormy sky. That's going to pick up that tree again. some of these top lines here a little bit to keep it from smudging out too much. We can get some of that color behind those branches. And after you get this, after you get your inking done, you could go in and throw some water on there, splash some water, sprinkle some water to get that oxide to react. I didn't do it on this one. I just wanted that smooth, chalky finish. 
to kind of match the pastel finish. Okay, let's pull these little guys up. Probably be the last juice I get out of those masks. I don't have quite the halo I did last time. All right, so. Tree limb back in here. artist I just keep sketching things out here till it looks good to me I mean, the mice are obviously a fairy tale so I'm not worried about having a tree that looks precise either Q-tip in here and smudge this round out anyway. And then I just keep going back the same way and just adding layers to it until it looks like a tree I could live with. So we'll be I'll add some more layers to that. Now we need our ink one more time. Put my stamps away. And I forgot to put the ground in. There's a little set of leaves here at the very bottom, and that's what I'm gonna use to put down here at the bottom. And that would be our river flood warning again. They just keep changing the time on it. So he already has some leaves there that he's playing in. We're just going to give him a few more. And give her some to walk on. I have scrap paper here so I'm going to stamp that off down below. And I'll end up trimming that down there too, so. this out I am gonna go ahead and put my leaves in there's three little individual leaves on the sheet as well and I just stamped some randomly in the background but I didn't leave room for my sentiment and one way that you can be sure you ha do have room for your sentiment if you're gonna stamp extra things in the background is to go ahead and lay that down beforehand which I did not do the last time and I kind of stamped over my, 
had a leaf underneath there. But. I just want to have a few falling down around here. Now we're done with our stamp. Until we put our sentiment down, that is. Pastels that we're using are the Poenor brand. If you can see, I think that's how you say it. And they just have a few different shades of and brown for the tree. And I'm also going to be using the red and yellow on these leaves that I just put down. I just, I like the finish, the, the, uh, with the pastel, having that chalky finish like the oxide does. Okay guys, I'm going to keep coloring here, and I'm going to go ahead and color the mice, and you can color them any way you want. Color, pencil, crayons, markers, whatever your go-to coloring is that you enjoy. And I'm going to be using the Artizal um, Real Brush Pens, and... I'm going to keep coloring leaves with the red and yellow and sketch out the tree and then we will be back. Okay guys, so we've finished the coloring and again I've just used the pastel pencils, pastel chalk pencils on the leaves and the tree and we have our little mouse family here and I just have the sediment to stamp yet and one little thing that I've been doing since um, working in a new area and don't have everything with me. I've turned my Misty upside down so I can use the cushion on the back of it to uh, give my stamp some cushion. Yeah, I could just put the stamp in the Misty and use it, but when it's something this small, I just flip the Misty over and use the cushion. And I do apologize for the lighting, but it is raining right now and I have to turn the light on and so I'm just going to stamp that there give it a second and there we go now I'm debating whether to put this on a card front or if I'm going to put it in a little frame I have, an, uh, I have a friend I'd like to send it to in a frame. So I'm going to debate for a little bit here what I want to, how I want to finish this piece up. But there's a different um, perspective on a stamp set and to build a scene with it and add some of your own touches to them and add in some mixed media as well. So there's the prototype and there's our piece from today or this the second round so i hope you guys enjoyed this and please remember to check out gare's store he has unfortunately a really good sale going right now but it is what it is and we can still continue to give him support through this so please take care guys and we will see you soon bye bye